Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about nuclear energy and how quietly and without any fanfare, it's gone from being dangerous and harmful to being green and friendly, plus the answer to all the world's future energy problems. I mean, there's been a sudden and significant shift in Europe's stance on nuclear energy. However, this shift in attitude is somewhat unexpected. I mean, nuclear power is now experiencing a resurgence in Europe. Plus, it's not just in Europe, but across the world, including the US. But for now, let's focus on the EU. Now, the energy cost crisis that began in 2021 and worsened in 2022 with the outbreak of hostilities in Ukraine has led to a recognition across the continent that there is now a need for a robust nuclear energy infrastructure. It appears that the previous serious potential health risks are now outweighed by the benefits of having an energy source that is increasingly seen as a green alternative to fossil fuels. Now, over 20 countries worldwide have already announced their plans to triple their nuclear power generation capacity in the coming years. Of these countries, around 50% are located in Europe. Now, in business, it's important to recognise that change is constant and everything flows. So the veracity of Heraclitus' assertion has once again been validated in the modern era. To be more precise, this is reflected in the new energy strategy. Now, it's worth noting that this change just slowly happened and there was no dramatic uh, St. Paul on the Road to Damascus transformation. Instead, it evolved gradually without the fanfare typically associated with such dramatic change. There were no sensationalist press articles or calls for punitive actions against those responsible for the previous direction of energy policy. I mean, the paradigm shifted abruptly, not overnight in most European countries, but it just gradually po prompted politicians to recognise the two key realities, which are A. Wind and solar cannot sustainably and reliably power industry, agriculture and everyday life, despite the high level of misplaced enthusiasm for this approach. B. Normal life requires an abundance of constant electricity production, including the use of gas, 420 grams of emitted CO2 per production of 1 kilowatt hour, coal, 820 grams for the same amount of energy, and that doesn't fully address the challenge. The solution is the peaceful atom, which emits just 6 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. For several decades, those promoting the green New Deal have accused the nuclear sector of causing irreparable damage to the environment. However, it's now clear that all these allegations have now been channeled down the memory hall. It would appear that some of those at the upper echelons of the European Union, though, were counting on the EU continuing to reject nuclear energy. I mean, when forming the current composition of the European Commission, it's old, new, new, old, Head Ursula von der Leyen, I mean von der Leyen, selected individuals that she felt were unquestionably supportive of the big new Green Deal and wouldn't retreat uh, or ask any awkward questions. Consequently, Teresa Ribera, known for her strongly negative stance on peaceful nuclear energy, was appointed presidential deputy and commissioner for competition. Now, her duties include overseeing the cleanliness of the energy transition. However, unexpectedly for many, and perhaps von der Leyen herself, Ribera stated when she took the post up that she, although she remains of the opinion regarding nuclear power plants she's against them, she will not prevent the construction of new nuclear power plants in EU states who have said that they want to have them. Currently, Ms. Ribera is the sole member of the European Commission, apart from obviously von der Leyen, uh, to publicly oppose the development of nuclear energy in Europe. Now, a significant portion of the support from Brussels is allocated to the promotion of small modular reactors in construction. Now, as the name implies, these reactors are smaller than the traditional major uh, nuclear plant with a maximum electrical output of 300 megawatts. Now, that's compared with 1,000 plus megawatts for a large power plant. 
Plus, they require less water for cooling and offer greater flexibility in their location than their larger counterparts. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, and that can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. And everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, in light of the ongoing renaissance in nuclear energy, the association Nuclear Europe has urged governments to facilitate the optimal utilisation of existing nuclear power plants and expedite the commission of the new capacities. They've also called for the development of transparent and achievable nuclear energy plans that align with the targets set out in the United Nations climate agreements. <coughs> They've also urged governments to demonstrate their commitment to nuclear energy by providing clear signals to the markets, consumers and investors so that they can invest in them safely in the knowledge that they're not going to be any nasty U-turns later. Now, the possibility of nuclear power plants closure has been a concern in Europe for decades. I mean, the first indications of the potential challenge to the continent's nuclear power plants was back in April '86 following the Chernobyl accident. And the anti-nuclear lobby intensified its campaign after that, following the Fukushima accident 13 years ago. Now that had a significant impact on Germany in particular, and it decided to move away from nuclear power. However, recently there's been a reversal of this trend, and it appears that nuclear has gone from being the serious bogeyman to the green saviour. I mean, political scientists have noticed that the renewed interest in nuclear power among the European countries may be the reason for Ribera's change of stance in our new role within the European executive branch. I mean, the mood among the nuclear power plant member states is serious. In the fight against their other comrades in the EU, the Commissar's position of anti-nuclear could make her position at risk. I mean, let's be honest, nuclear energy is virtually inexhaustible. It's constant and cost-effective source of electricity, which unlike the other so-called renewables like wind and solar, plus, of course, the favourite of the UK Minister for Energy Destruction, Ed Miliband, the man who lost a fight with a bacon sandwich live on TV, is unicorn farts. He seems to think they are the future of energy generation in the UK, and uh, unlike the rest of Europe, it's nuclear. So nuclear, therefore, is regarded as the primary energy source for expanding artificial intelligence in data center sectors, with a constant significant amount of electricity consumed. I mean, in April of this year, Goldman Sachs forecast that by 2030, data centers in the United States will account for 8% of all energy consumption, up from the current figure of 4%. I mean, the potential for growth in the nuclear energy sector is also reflected in the investment decisions of prominent figures such as Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Gates has ponied up over a billion dollars in the startup TerraPower, which is developing advanced reactors, while Bezos' Amazon paid $650 million for a data center campus with a nuclear facility in Pennsylvania. I mean, the US Department of Energy is investing $900 million in advanced nuclear technologies, including SMRs, and they're offered to enhance safety and cost effectiveness. I mean, even the green loony Canadian government's investing in SMR research, and a report by its conference board finds that if it built a new nuclear plant, it would increase Canada's GDP by more than $90 billion and create thousands of jobs over the life of the project. South Korea is investing over $1.8 in developing the next generation advanced reactors, while India, the Ch Prime Minister, has pledged to increase the installed nuclear capacity by more than 70%, with seven new reactors being built in the next five years. Now, France is the clear leader in Europe, with over 50 operating reactors providing between 70 and 75% of the country's electricity. And it's worth noting that during the recent election campaigns for elections to the European and national parliaments, Emmanuel Macron highlighted the potential for the construction of six new nuclear plants, while Marine Le Pen spoke of the possibility of up to 20. Now, the British company Rolls-Royce 
aims to become a leading provider of small modular reactors and it's entered into agreements to develop many nuclear power plants in the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. Additionally, Finland, Sweden and Estonia are pursuing the implementation of this technology. France and Slovakia are engaged in a joint venture to construct two large reactors with a combined capacity of 2,070 megawatts. Plus, in October last year, the, Belgian, the Bulgarian government announced plans to construct two additional reactors at the old Soviet uh, Kozludu uh, power plant. Even Italy, which permanently terminated its nuclear power program back in 1987 following a referendum, which it was just after Chernobyl, uh, it's now looking at um, introducing a new power uh, <coughs> Uh, perspectives uh, on nuclear. I mean, the Italian environmental minister, Gilbert Patin, has announced plans to uh, for new regulations allowing the use of nuclear technology in the country by the end of 2024. He says that the new set of laws uh, on the nuclear industry, which will come into force in 2025, uh, will allow for the um, building uh, of new nuclear energy industry in the country and by 2024 by 2044 11 percent of Italy's um, electricity consumption and uh, production will be of nuclear origin and that's equivalent to 35 uh, gigawatts I mean Italy is one of the most reliant on natural gas in Europe with almost 40 percent of its electricity uh, production is derived from uh, the combustion of gas. I mean, Poland's another country that's placing its trust in nuclear energy. Earlier this month, the Polish government announced a plan uh, to invest 60 billion zlotys, which is about 14 billion euros, uh, in the construction of its first nuclear plant. It's anticipated the plant will be able to supply up to 30% of Poland's total energy needs in the future. And its state-owned energy company, PAJ, has just entered into a partnership with Westinghouse to construct three reactors at a location on the Baltic Sea. I mean, the construction is expected to start in 2026. So, the construction of nuclear plants in Hungary, the PACs, and Turkey will continue as planned, but because they are being built by... Uh, Russia's Rosatom, uh, the EU has chosen not to include them in their plans or make comments on them at this precise moment in time. However, that doesn't affect the fact that they're not going ahead. They are definitely going ahead and will all be launched on time. Of course, the proposed action has been dubbed the nuclear renaissance by the Spanish publication El Economista. And it will invigorate the energy sector of most uh, countries who want to take it up. However, it won't benefit Belgium, Spain and Germany. The first two countries still have nuclear power plants in operation, but there are plans to close them uh, in the near future. I mean, uh, in the effort to uh, phase out nuclear power, Germany was obviously at the forefront and got rid of all of its uh, plants. I mean, from 20, 2002, nuclear plants in Germany had 20% of the total electricity generation, yet 20 years later they phased the whole lot out, so there was no nuclear electricity at all. I mean, in recent years, Germany has now experienced a significant disruption in its energy supply, despite the deployment of 600 billion worth of solar panels, wind turbines and renewable energy investment. It can't be its energy needs due to unfavourable weather conditions. I mean, at the time when the rest of Europe was looking to return to atomic energy, Berlin was not even considering such a move. <laughs> I mean, the Spanish nuclear power industry is still operational, but that's not a long-term scenario. Uh, Ms. Ribera, as I've mentioned already, uh, was part of the uh, <coughs> government uh, of the uh, Spain where she was the Minister for Green Transition and she was involved in the plan uh, to close uh, Spain's, Spain's nuclear in industry which will be closed down uh, by the end of 2035. I mean, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, Spain will lose 7,123 megawatts of production capacity which is about 20% of the country's uh, total electricity production. 
I mean, Belgium planned to completely shut down its nuclear sector by 2025. However, due to the uh, problems with the supply of gas because of the situation between Russia and Ukraine, it's decided to continue its nuclear energy uh, plans until 2025, uh, 2035. But uh, it's still going to shut them down. But anyway, all over Europe, the USA and Asia, nuclear's made a comeback. Let's see how that progresses. Now, thank you for watching. And I will hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget the comments section and I'll see you all again soon.